Nobody has seen Edmund since he left Rahway, and if Judy Morton was murdered right after Edmund's visit... Edmund is not dead. I don't believe it. I'm not going to let you believe it either. He can't get to a phone. He left this in the parking lot at the prison. You think he just didn't notice that? Brooke, Edmund is alive. I would know it if he weren't. I should have shown you these earlier. I found these hidden in Jim's dark room at Temple. I made copies, and I left the originals there so Jim wouldn't know that I had seen them. Insurance policies on you and Edmund. Jim gets two million dollars if Edmund dies. Come on, tough guy. Can't you kill a guy and place a bolt into a wall? You really think I don't know what you're doing? <coughs> Analyze me with. Oh, Edmund, wow. you're making this so hard on yourself. It is truly not my intention to prolong your misery. I just can't let you ruin this for me. Is that what I'm doing? Oh, there has to be some entertainment value in this somewhere. So tell us, Edmund, which is worse, the dampness or the cold? Just get it over with. <laughs> no. no, you have to die a natural death for me to cash in big. Good hell. Well, I've been there. I like Pine Valley a lot better. Listen, something that I need you to do for me. Depends on you, pal. And what you say in this little telephone call. So tell us, Edmund, will Brooke be a blushing bride, or will she be a clammy corpse? Let's watch. Well, let me spell it out. This is it for you. It's, it's, it's the end. But Brooke, she still has a chance. She doesn't know my story. <coughs> She'll figure it out. Not if you disappear. That'll just make more curious. <laughs> and what did curiosity do for the cat? You wouldn't want that little brat of hers to be without his mom, would you? Huh? <laughs> you hero types make it so easy for the rest of us. Somebody will figure it out. Oh, I don't think so. Because I just don't cover my tracks. I bury them. Nevertheless, Brooke out there asking all kinds of questions could kick up a little more dust than I'm comfortable with. That's why she has to buy that you died a sad, tragic death. Accidental, but tragic nonetheless. Bruises on my wrist. God, I mean, what... Whatever they find of you that washes up on some distant shore, if it has bruises or cuts or whatever on it, it doesn't matter. They'll attribute that to you bouncing off the rocks before you drown and prove nothing. Poor, sad, devastated, still grieving Edmund Gray. What do you suppose he was thinking the day that he went down to that beach? The beach where his lovely wife died. Was it an accident or was it suicide? Who cares? <laughs> as long as I get the life I want, the money I want, and Brooke stays out of the loop. Look, nobody buries their tracks that well. Nobody. Well, let me tell you something, pal. You better hope, and I do, because if Brooke even has a clue that I had anything to do with the downing of that plane or your demise, it's bye-bye. You understand? What do you want? Good. Very good. You know, I've always had the key to any good working relationship. It's cooperation. Now, just to ensure that Brooke doesn't run out and grab the troops and have them searching all over the place for you, at least not yet, this is what you're going to say. Jim has to know that Edmund talked to Judy and he had to shut her up. We can't prove that Thomason was, was connected to her death. And I'm telling you, Brooke, the world would have to end before Edmund Gray would let Sammy and, and, and Maddie uh, lose their father. It wouldn't be his choice to make, Dimitri. If 
I thought Thomason could match Edmund in brain power. I might buy it, but he can't. No way. He no may how. have laid a trap for him. We don't know. Then Edmund will have a way out of it. My brother will not, cannot be outmaneuvered by that piece of slime. Dimitri is absolutely right. The man is not born who can outsmart Edmund Gray. Oh, Aunt Phoebe. Please, darling, keep those thoughts positive. And before you know it, this will be over. Hello. Brooke, hi. It's me. Edmund, uh, where are you? How are you? Let me speak to him. Brooke, you sound worried. Did something happen? I just thought that you would call me before this. But didn't I tell you that um, this assignment was uh, deep cover? Well, yeah, but that doesn't mean that I don't worry. You know, it, it, in fact, it means the opposite. I... Nothing's going to happen, OK? Just chill and listen to me. I can't come home just yet. But I want you to tell Dimitri and the kids that I'm fine. Can you do that? Yes, of course I can do that. But you know, isn't there a number? You can't you give me some place in case I need to reach you, get in touch with you? I'm moving around too much, Brooke. And you know me, when I'm undercover, I'm as silent as the grave. Give Maddie and Sam a kiss for me. You better hope that Brooke bought that. Otherwise, she's going to be sucking salt water. What did he say? Where is he? Jim's got him. Where? What? How do you know that? Something in his voice? No, he was very cool. It was what he said. It was what he said, the words. Chill, deep cover, silent as the grave. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. What is it, darling? Jim must have been there listening to the conversation, and Edmund was planting clues. Then we must call the police immediately. No, Phoebe, no. Look, I carry this in my car. I want you to keep it. Dimitri, uh, my niece is not keeping that wetland in this house. And Phoebe, I don't want it. Well, well, thank look, heavens for that. It's too dangerous. In Pigeon Hollow, isn't it? Yes, I wanted to make sure he's safe. Put that thing down. Brooke, you need it for protection. Well, what about Edmund? We're risking his life every moment that we put off peace into Phoebe, this. Phoebe, we can't do that, at least not yet. Well, but Derek already knows about it. The whole highway patrol is looking for his car. And we'll call Derek back, and, and we'll tell him that Edmund's OK. In heaven's name, why? Well, well, we're dealing with a maniac, Phoebe. We, we don't know what his next move is going to be. It's very obvious what his next move is. He's going to kill Edmund. Now, if Jim wanted Edmund dead, he'd have been dead by now. That phone call means that he has something else in mind. But what? I don't know. But, but whatever it is, it gives us time to find Edmund. And the police can help. No, the, the minute Jim thinks anybody else is onto him, Edmund's gone. Aunt Phoebe, Dimitri's right. If we act like everything is normal, it's going to give Dimitri find time to track Edmund down. And put Thomason out of commission. For heaven's sakes, do you think that Jim's going to let you just walk up to him and end it all? Aunt Phoebe, I can't... What do you think he's planning? I can't second guess a psychopath. That's why I want Brooke to carry that weapon. It's already settled. She said no. The gun stays. What? Aunt Phoebe. It stays. Listen, how are you going to track Edmund and Jim? There are ways to trace cellular phone calls. So we know it didn't come from Edmund's phone because that was left in the prison I know parking lot. I know that. I'm going to access Thomason's account. And when I find him, if he's hurt Edmund, I'm going to kill him. Oh. Laura. Please, Mom, tell me it's not true. Sweetheart. Hi. What is it? Jim, I, he sent me a card saying you accepted his proposal. Oh, honey, it's, it's, uh, it's complicated. I can't believe you said yes. I mean, you, you didn't, did you? Mom, 
W what is happening here? I mean, are, are you okay? Yes, honey, I'm fine, really. I'm really, I'm really fine. Don't, don't look so worried. Okay. What's going on? Uh, Brooke, I have got to get going. Remember what I said. Okay. Okay, y you guys look like you just split the hydrogen atom and, and Dimitri Merrick is like Mr. Mystery. I mean, what, what's the deal here? Honey, you're imagining things. No, I'm not. I mean, I heard it... I, I heard it in your voice on the phone when I called last week, and I'm feeling it now. Something is going down here, and it's not good. I mean, is it Jim? Are you marrying him? Mom, please, answer me. I will. Honey, I'll tell you everything, but first I need your help. Honey, what I'm about to say to you has to be kept strictly between the two of us, all right? Not a word to Jim. Yeah, un understood. First, no matter what he says or what he does, I am not marrying him. Oh, my God. Why does that matter so much to you? You know, I, I just... You don't want me marrying again? No, no, I just, I don't want you marrying him. Why? Because I don't like him. Why, I, Laura? He's not right. You. Why? Because you know something about him? You know something that you're not telling us? It will never go beyond these walls, sweetheart. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. I'm sorry, but you have to talk about it, all right? Because it's extremely important. Why? Why? Why does it matter? I mean, you're not marrying him. That's the only thing that counts. Laura, I know that you know something more about Jim Thompson. And I need to know what that is. I need to know everything that there is to know about him. Now. me about Jim. I mean, I already said, I, I don't want to talk about it. But we need to know, Laura. You're not marrying him. I mean, can't we just leave it at that? No, we can't. What else do you know about him? Mom, okay, the, the stuff that happened, these things, it, it doesn't matter now. It, it's over. Honey, listen to me. I am your mother. And it doesn't matter what you say to me. Whatever you tell me, it's not going to make me love you any less. Darling, we're family. We always will be. Why? I mean, why do you have to keep digging? Has Jim frightened you? I mean, if that's the case, that's all the more reason to tell us. It doesn't matter. It, no matter how awful you think it is, Laura, I will understand. It is, Jim. Isn't it? What are you hiding, Laura? Honey, honey, believe me when I tell you, whatever it is, I will understand, really. Well, well, well. So, what do we have here? 